wanted to attempt to do a show, but basking in the sun, eating all day is like, I just had to hold off, hold off. Although there was a lot of news and I was itching to get in the show, but you know, when you're in that environment, it's hard to get one down. Brian, how have you been, my friend? Not bad. Well, I hope for your vacation, you were not on, you were not on the beach with team one of Suicide Squad. <laughs> uh, hope yeah. you were on the team two side, at least. <laughs> right? Um, we got to get into a big discussion about that. We're not going to do it on this episode because we have a lot to talk about regarding news. We're going to save that for a separate episode. Um, but let's get started. Before we do get started, though, I do want to mention one thing. You sent this to me, and I believe I saw it before you sent it to me. But when you sent it to me, I was a little bit even more agitated. Why? This has to do with a note from Warner Brothers being sent to David Goyer for... Man of Steel. I don't know, Brian, if you recall. Uh, well, we talked about David Goyer's comments and then tying them back to his work on Man of Steel and yes. about the, uh, I think what you're going to ask me about has to do with Krypton, correct? Correct. Okay. So David Goyer says, he receives a note from Warner Brothers and the note says, um, he, he, he goes on to say, and I quote, one note I, I got was on Man of Steel, where the ending involves Superman utilizing the pod that he arrived in as a child in order to bring down General Zod's ship. The note we got from the studio said, you have to change that. We asked why. They said, because if Superman uses that pod and it's destroyed while saving the city, how is he ever going to get back to Krypton? Their response was, there was just this long pause and he, and we said, Krypton blew up. You saw 30 minutes of it. Brian, this is what they were dealing with. This is the kind of individuals in their big chairs and offices making all the money asking about that and inquiring about stuff like that i i would go crazy i would go absolutely nuts i would be I, brian what what did you i'm sure you laugh when you saw this of course and then in my mind i'm like well this is the part so when they get outed this is the part where they say well i'm <laughs> sure it exists somewhere in the multiverse we can make that work <laughs> right because that's the kind of multiverse I, but, this one feels like, right? As, 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 as right now, they can say that. At that point, they probably didn't even respond to that. They was just they was just quiet about it. But this is the sort of thing, man. That, in my opinion, DC needs to go elsewhere. Well, we we do know that um, there's a deal in place, and the guy from this Discovery, what's his name, Sasloff, is going to be take. Yeah, he's going to be taken over by at least early mid 2022 yeah that's about when the deal is supposed to close so i would think that the personnel who are going to be running this we will know by probably the the end of the year if not you know kind of january of, of next year but I, I think to go to go back to the humor of this it's like so let's see we have every run of superman where krypton has been destroyed in the comics <laughs> And you're we still asking the, about it, yeah. We have the beginning of Richard Donner's Superman in 1978, where Krypton is destroyed around Marlon Brando. And I would think that somewhere in that studio, if you worked with Marlon Brando, given what we know about Marlon Brando, you would remember everything about that experience, including if the planet blew up around him. Yeah. We have in Superman Returns, he goes back to the Anchor ruins terms. of Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone for five years. And then we have a Man of Steel. Krypton is blown up again in the start of that movie. So it's not like they had any reminders or clues. That the <laughs> was gone. I'm telling you, I would have lost my mind. But anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way because I just want people to see. And pe most people know if you're if you've been in this world for, the, let's say, the last 10, 15 years, you know, the problems that Warner Brothers has over there with the, this property. 
And and this just is a, another example of their uh, not knowledgeable um, mind when it comes to this sort of stuff. But and wanting th- to affect real change. Yeah. Without the yeah. knowledge. Yeah. 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 So let's get started. Disney, man. Disney and Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, Kevin Feige got involved. We, we heard about his response or his disapproval of what has transpired thus far with Scarlett Johansson. Uh, you know, Kevin Feige, the people that work with him enjoy working with him. And we spoke about this previously and we and, and you said to me that we're pretty sure Kevin Feige knew about this and that this was coming. And I guess he was upset with Disney's response mm-hmm. um, towards towards this and how they're going about sort of saying not so nice things about Scarlett Johansson because of her lawsuit. There has been talk amongst other YouTubers and but they've gone a little bit too far in saying that this may be the beginning of the end in terms of Kevin Feige Kevin Feige's relationship with the MCU which I don't think that is the case at all some say that he needs to move on and try new things I feel Kevin Feige has yet to prove not to not to prove he doesn't have anything to prove but certainly um, revive what the Fantastic Four should be. The MC, the, the, the X-Men. There's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of characters that needs to be displayed on, on, on screen that he hasn't done yet. So there's still a lot of things that I'm pretty sure he wants to accomplish over there in the MCU. And again, not every relationship is all beautiful and Everybody has fights. Everybody has disagreements. This is just one of them. Brian, your thoughts on this whole thing and how it's going and where you think um, it may lead towards. Yeah, I I have a different take than I think I've seen out there. Uh, I am not as concerned about the rhetoric as I mm-hmm. think people are. I think there's a shock value because we haven't seen Disney at the center of this, we have seen, for example, you know, Warner Brothers versus Chris Nolan versus Denny Villeneuve. We have seen, not necessarily in court, but we have seen wars of words between yeah, filmmakers yeah. and studios. Obviously, Zack Snyder and Warner Brothers well documented. Yes. But there's a difference. People need to understand there's a difference when lawyers are involved. Okay. There's a lot of posturing that goes yeah. into this. Yeah. And I think people need to settle down a little bit. You yeah. need to understand that Scarlett Johansson's agent's job is to get her paid every last cent that mm-hmm. they can. Okay. When they feel like there's been some fuzzy math, which the pandemic has created, and we talked about this last time, this transitional phase of what is box office? Where are the revenues coming from? How do you release these movies and how do you make money off of it? It's all changed. It's all changed. So if they're going to represent her, they're not going to do it by saying, hey, you know what would be nice is if you kind of threw a little tip on... No. They're going to say, this is a billion-dollar movie. Full stop. On her percentage, she should get $50 million. That's what they're going to go with. Do you think a company as big as Disney is going to say... Oh, okay, we'll sit down. No, it's their legal department that believes mm-hmm. they have a contract. So you know what they're mm-hmm. going to say? They're obviously going to raise a giant middle finger and say, come get it. Yeah, yeah. That's their job. People don't yeah. understand that. Like, they need to show strong at the outset because when this ultimately probably does settle, it will settle somewhere in between. Yeah. And... It'll, but what they realize is that settling process will set a precedent for other negotiations of this type. That's yeah. why you need to play hardball with the first one. Yeah. I don't think this is about Bob Chapek being 
personal with Scarlett Johansson and vice versa. I don't, I really don't. Mm -hmm. I think this is about Scarlett Johansson representing for herself after waiting for this movie for a, for too long, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And seeing the box office maybe open strong, but then peter out faster than was expected. Because notice Mm -hmm. the timing of this, it didn't happen until after we were into week two and the, and the box office really was tailing off. And I think from the studio's perspective, they understand that there's a whole fleet of contracts that fit this mold of things yeah, that yeah. were in production in 2019, 2020, where whatever happens here, they're pretty much gonna have to do for everyone else in some form. I would note that Scarlett Johansson did not sue Marvel. That's important. She yeah. sued Disney. I think that's her way of saying, I don't blame Kevin. That's yeah. my code for that. I don't blame the people at the parliament. Yeah, yeah. Which is why, in my mind, this thing can get settled in a room with a number. And I don't think Kevin Feige's dream of working with Scarlett Johansson on something in the future is dead. I really don't. I think okay. it's one of those where if everyone's happy with the finances and the legality, yeah, the creative side of this and the partnership side is intact i really believe that i do but but i would also fully expect kevin feige to be more with the artist than with the studio on this because he is in the creative so yes i do think he knew i think he knew it was a risk i think he probably argued for it to be handled differently than it is being handled but frankly that's above his pay grade and so he basically is saying because he doesn't want to burn a bridge with talent he kind of has to side with talent but not so strong that he would be on the outs with the studio. And I think that's what he's doing. So two things. I was looking at the numbers for domestic box office for MCU films from lowest to highest. Captain America's first Avenger, Captain America, first Avenger was the least at 177, I believe. Right now, currently, Black Widow's at 175 around there. It is not only until it's not only up until Winter Soldiers when the numbers start getting crazy. We're talking about after Winter Soldier, we're talking about 300 and better domestic box office. Is it possible that and and think about this? First Avengers, first Captain America, first Avenger, no pandemic, 177. Granted, MCU wasn't what MCU is now. It is quite feasible to or reasonable to believe that at least domestically, we would have gotten at minimum 250 to 300 mil domestically for, for um, uh, Black Widow. Right now, uh, globally is around 300 and change. Yeah, but even that number is not totally fair because China still hasn't opened. Yeah, exactly. And all the movies you're going to quote me have a full, normal China box office in them. So, <clears throat> like you said, this num this 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 will get settled out of court, obviously. And, and and you're correct in saying that you know these guys have to posture. We can't make, we cannot seem to look weak. We have to say what we're going to say and and set a, a, a foundation so that moving forward, we're not in the, we, we don't get into this sort of uh, dilemma again, especially during these times. And and you and, you know because regardless of what's going on, people are still making deals and people are still planning for the future. Number two, wouldn't it be a good idea, possibly, if they do a, 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 a one weekend or that first weekend release on streaming where you pay thirty dollars to see it, rather than have it continuously, um, uh, you know, every day until they do put it on free. You know what I'm saying? Is that something that you think they could would would do, and, and would it make sense? You know, it's it's really. I think it's that's part of what makes this hard is the simple reality is you can't you can't assume a box office. We can guess, 
But I mean, the reality is you still had a number of theaters that were technically open that had capacity constraints. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to get into a Delta variant discussion, but it was starting to have an impact on policymakers and restrictions, travel and stuff like that in certain geographies as this movie rolled into its sort of third and fourth week. The absence of China can't be understated. I mean, if Scarlett Johansson has a percentage of the global box and the second biggest box office in the world hasn't shown this movie yet, well, then obviously she's got future revenue coming off that. But the question is, how much box office are they going to lose because of piracy and this long lag time between U.S. Open and China Open? Yeah. I mean, is Disney to blame for that? I don't, I don't know. Like, it, it, could you prove that in a court that Disney to blame for that, which is all that really matters here if you're going to go to trial? Yeah. You know, and then on top of that, yeah, we, the day and date thing, we don't totally know. But, you know, if I think we, you know, we, we've probably overstated, I think we've said like Disney gets 100%. I think what I've read is they get more like 90 yeah, yeah, yeah. because of Roku and some of the mm-hmm. services they mm-hmm. share this with. But the point is, like, there will be documented numbers of this that, and if they're one of the obvious things to me is they could simply give her a revised percentage of the Disney Plus take. That's a to me, like, so if she was going to get, say, eight percent of the, I think that's what Downey got was like eight. Think about that for a second. He had eight percent of Avengers Endgame's global. You run the numbers on two point seven billion dollars and get back to me what eight percent is. <laughs> but yeah, so if she had eight percent and that was meant on a box office where they were going to share half with the distributors, you know, maybe mm-hmm. they could you know write a clause in there where she's getting like twelve percent on the Disney Plus revenues. So on a low, you know, on a lower pool, she's actually getting a higher stake. I don't know. That seems workable to me. Yeah, I think where it's going to get really dicey is with on on the HBO Max side because there there is no thirty dollars. There's no way to definitively define what the revenue contribution of Wonder Woman eighty four, Suicide Squad. Because if you're a subscriber, you just get all those. But how the heck is someone going to prove? what dollars came off that at least yeah. with disney you can point to everyone who paid 30 bucks you can yeah. add that up yeah. so i actually think this one's easier to solve yeah then if someone goes like if someone from like if idris elba says suicide squad box office which we're going to talk about i was supposed to get x percentage and this number is way low i don't know how his agents are going to prove yeah what the hbo max contribution is yeah, he's gonna just take that check. He ain't gonna deal with that. But yeah, man, this this has certainly started a conversation about how you want to do things going forward, especially on the circumstances which we're in. And it doesn't seem like there is a short-term end to this. You know what it also suggests to me? I would bet that Disney offered her something as part of this decision to release the movie, and it wasn't enough. And her agents said, we're going to take this to the court of public opinion, and we're going to threaten to take it to a court of law. I would guess Disney made an offer that tweaked the contract a little bit. Yeah. And they probably said no, and then now it becomes public. Yeah. I mean... Not for nothing. Still, Scarlett Johansson made a hell of a lot of money, and she's going to make you know an extra whenever this is settled. She's gonna probably make another twenty twenty five mil on top of what she's already gotten, according to Disney's twenty mil, which is still nothing to. And I, but I get it, but I get it. Uh, let's move on. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about this whole situation. Um, Jungle Cruise came in at what? 35 million? Yeah, 34 million US opening weekend. Did they come up with the numbers as to what people spent uh, at home? $30 million. So a million, a million subscribers or a million people bought through Disney Plus. Okay. And then another 28 million uh, overseas. So a $90 million all in opening weekend 
Yeah. Listen, I wasn't interested in this movie. I, and, you know, people want that family. If you got kids, you want that, and, and you like The Rock, then you go see this movie. And not to say I don't like The Rock, I just don't like the films that he's in. Because he's just playing The Rock, in my opinion. Um, we all knew that this movie wasn't going to make gangbusters at the box office, obviously, because of um, that the pandemic and a number of other factors, but you know, any this is not gonna these movies are not gonna work anymore. They gotta find another way to if they're looking for that next franchise or that next Pirates of the Caribbean. It's it's a lot tougher right now to 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 do those things. Yeah. What were your thoughts on the numbers that you saw? And do you, I mean, I don't care about these films. What, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's a testament to The Rock and Emily Blunt that this movie did as well as it did. I, this was actually a bigger number than I expected. When I look at the trailers for this movie, they were clearly going for the new Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, it, it, this is a Disney ride. The effects looked straight out of 2000, <laughs> to me, at least. Yeah. Like with the creatures and stuff they were fighting and the and I like that CGI looked terrible. It looked no better than Davy Jones from uh, from the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think The Rock and Emily Blunt still have enough star power, and they promoted the heck out of it to where it resonated with us. With you know, to your point, a, a family audience, not with young kids, but probably with sort of you know, junior high, you know, high school age kids maybe, and it seemed to find an audience. And yeah. if there was no pandemic, this, I think, would slot in pretty much alongside a lot of the other rock-led movies in terms of box office. You know, you kind of be like, okay, I'm probably going to make some money. You're probably going to make money on this, but you're not going to make huge money on it. Maybe the global box wind up, would wind up being like 500, 550, somewhere around there. You think? And it's I was going to... I was I'm just I, going I, off the numbers they put up. I was going to ask you about that because we we have spoken about this a couple of months ago, and you, you stated you know the Rock is a box office draw, you know, and, and is he? My question to you was going to be is is the, is is he lose is he losing his mojo? Is he losing that draw? Are people not that interested in sitting down for two hour and a half or two hours to watch a Rock film? I think, I mean, the the opening of this was pretty comparable to Rampage, San Andreas. I mean, so like you can kind of see those movies all make about the same amount. And so that's where it's like, if you get the rock in your, in your movie, you very rarely wind up in the red. You just very this rarely gonna... wind up. This one might because of pandemic, but I mean, yeah. this had a bigger budget and, and pandemic will limit the box, especially now. But yeah. I'm saying, like, historically, if you look at what this opened at and compared it to what it would have opened at, you would say, yeah, this would have slotted in right in, right in his collection and been mm -hmm. fine, but not necessarily unforgettable. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Did you guys see Jungle Cruise? I haven't seen it. I'm not going to see it. I Same guys don't... directing Black Adam, too, so... And we'll talk about that. If you're interested in that aspect of it, pay attention to the direction and if you liked what you saw visually. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, there's some some uh, interesting uh, tidbits that we want to get into regarding Black Adam mm -hmm. uh, that we'll talk about later. Um, but let us know in the comments section below uh, 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 what you thought about the Jungle Cruise. Um, and did you expect it to do well at the box office? I'm pretty sure most of you didn't. Um, what if... Um, it came out a few, probably like a few weeks ago or a week ago, that what if would be as important to the MCU as other Marvel uh, studio projects? I don't know if you saw the first episode, Brian. Did I you? have not. No, okay. We're doing that separately, so yeah, I have not yet. Yeah. Um, from what I've heard, 
they are saying that some of these characters that pop up in the What If series will may possibly pop up later in um, future projects. Um, I'm I'm going to wait till you see this episode, but. Listen, after the multiverse, after Loki, I am not surprised that anything can happen in the MCU. I'm just, I, I just, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised because anything can do it. And again, uh, I'll say it again. Tracy Spivey said it. You know, they should call the, um, Dr. Strange in the, uh, um, not, wasn't it, what was it he said? He said, he said something about open door, naming a title of the movie open door. This is an open door to do whatever you want. And the what if seems to be connected somewhat to Loki, although they haven't really come, said anything regarding it, but this sort of confirms that if some of these characters in the what if series may pop up in future series or future projects, then this is a direct result of what happened in Loki. What are your thoughts on, on, on this um, statement by, um, or this possible rumor that these characters may show up, may show up in the future and in, in other projects? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I think that's one of the top two or three reasons why you would do this show in the first place, I think is to, especially in the context of multiverse is to plant seeds and lay foundations for different iterations of the same character or you know, completely redone characters to to appear i think i've i've tried to stay away from the guts of reviews that are out there mm -hmm. the concern that i have before i watch the first episode is there seems to be at least a camp of reviews that feels like they didn't swing hard enough uh mm -hmm. at, at this based on the early episodes and that would be a real disappointment to me because of all the shows that were on the docket this felt like the one where you could just go for the 800 foot home run and and what would be the downside of doing that and so i think if they played it safe i will be i will be disappointed relative to my very high expectations now what i've been encouraged by is people have really praised the action in this series from what they've seen and that makes me very excited because animation obviously as we said um, Marvel's got some work to do there. And uh, if they've come up with sort of a, a new interface or a way to kind of choreograph great action in animated form, I'm very excited to see that. So, and Invincible set the bar pretty high earlier. Oh, this yeah, year. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Hey, if Invincible, listen, I, what, I, what I'll say about Invincible was fantastic. If you haven't seen it, shame on you. It, but I, I saw the first episode of What If I Won't Get Into It, but I'll say this. The animation is beautiful, in my opinion. And it's, and, I, and again, I'll reiterate that it definitely reminds me of the 1960s or that first uh, cartoon or animation of Superman when it came out years ago. It, it reminds me of that sort of style and they pull it off very nicely. Although the, the voice acting is somewhat off a little bit, but nothing that ruins the experience and again we have to remember this this is these are situations individuals uh, uh, uh episodes of a of a specific movie so you're looking at a two-hour movie they say you're looking at at a what if of and, and they're condensing it into like 30 minutes so I would say don't go in with like super high expectations. Just look to enjoy it and to and to be like, oh, you know, it's one of those things that you'll see it, not because it's whack, but just because of the curiosity of what if. And that's what I think this is this basically is. And and you'll get some great episodes and and some episodes that are, uh, may not be so great. We haven't seen all of them yet, obviously, so we just have to wait and see. But the first episode, I I, I enjoyed watching it. So. That that's for you, Brian. So that when you see it, you're like, okay, we'll talk about it. I hope you see it in the next few days of the week. So you and you'll tell me what you thought of it. Yeah. Um, next up, and this is just the beginning. Miss Marvel is being pushed to 2022. And, and originally, we were hearing that Miss Marvel will release um, this year. 
Um, granted, we got Eternal, Shang Chi, um, what other sh- Hawkeye coming out? Anything Spider-Man. else? Spider Man. We have we have a lot of stuff that's coming out. Although I don't know why they would delay Miss Marvel because it's a show. It's not necessarily a movie that we would have to like you know space out or whatever the case may be. But they want to wait. That's fine. But because of what's going on in the world, you sort of start to feel or have that feeling inside you're like, hmm, we might get some delays here. Brian, do you think that is definitely going to happen? Shang-Chi is a month away. And we got to talk a little bit about Shang-Chi just a little bit um, in this, in this, in this, um, In this in this topic, um, but yeah, Shang Chi and then Eternals is what in November, yep. and then Spider Man in December, and based on what's going on, these numbers aren't looking great in the box office. What are your thoughts on this? Possibly some of these titles possibly being delayed. I think the odds are high at this point. I think it is very fluid, but you hit on the key point. Box office has rolled back over. And some of that is due to restrictions. Some of that is due to seemingly increased concern, you know, in some areas about being, about going to the theater again. And it's always hard to tell, you know, draw a line between reviews and COVID and box office, but the reality is, you know, Snake Eyes box office was terrible. Our reviews were poor. Box office was terrible. We're going to talk about another film where reviews were great and box office was pretty bad. The amount of budgets that are riding on these films. I mean, I read a story, I read a rumor the other day that James Bond has to make $900 million to break even because of the money they wasted on advertising, reshoots, delays already. That's going to get delayed. So when you're sitting on movies that, you know, you think ought to be a billion, billion two, billion three, at this point, can you take the chance? I think the risk with something like Shang-Chi is you've planted the flag on the date. You have marketed the heck out of this movie with September 3rd as the date. To back off it now, yeah, you're basically going to say that's $50 million we lit on fire. Because you're going to have to do it all over again with a new date, whenever that's going to be. Yeah. But it So now conspiracy theory side, if Shang-Chi is not good. We got to get into a discussion about that. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> and is there a chance you put it out September 3rd and blame COVID for its underperformance when in reality, it's just not that good? Well, that leads me to the, and this is something that you pointed out quite some time ago where we discussed Shang-Chi and the trailers that they were uh, showing us. And that they're showing us too much. They're basically, in this last trailer, they're basically showing us the ending. That he gets the 10 rings and he has his whatever power that he's going to show off. But at the end of this, he's going to get the 10 rings. We know that for sure. They're showing us way too much. And you, like you said, usually when that happens is because they want to try anything to get you to come see this film. Mm -hmm. Because they're not confident in it. I'm not confident in, it, in, in this in this movie. I is I'm gonna go see it. I'm gonna go see it. Is this gonna be theater only? Yep. I'm gonna go see it. Right if, now it's theater only. If it was HBO Max, this may be one that I just may chill. Oh, you'd go to the theater for this. I don't know, man. I don't know. Based on what I've been seeing, 
You're right. Yeah, I'll probably go to him. Because they have they have they have have they um put it out on uh Fandango or anything like that for us to buy? Uh, there hasn't been um you know that's a good question. I haven't even checked. I mean the, the TV ads are still saying September 3rd. So they have not backed off that yet. But as hmm. I said, you know, there's never really so there's never been a I mean, not that Rotten Tomatoes is any everything, but there's never been a certified rotten Marvel movie. Yeah. Even like Dark World, I believe, is right like around six, like sixty five percent or something like that. That's that was technically bad. fresh. Yeah. But it's bad, yeah. technically fresh, but bad. I don't know for sure this one will get that low, but I'm just spec I'm just throwing out there. You know that Shang-Chi has to be part of the MCU. You know that he's an important part of the MCU. If for whatever reason this movie just didn't get there. Pandemic might be your cover to kind of say like, well, this movie would have done fine. It just was a pandemic conditions and we can kind of move on. And then you can sort of pivot and course correct without yeah. maybe people paying as much attention to the fact that the box office underwhelmed. But it, yeah, I'm with you. I see the TV spots, same as you. Every TV spot's got new footage in it. And I'm like, I'm telling you people, there's a correlation when you start to see yeah. a lot of new footage to like, there's tracking concern about the movie. Yeah. And this was one of these films. Um, I got to go back at the last video that we did in terms of um, this, uh, when we were saying whether or not some of these films are going to hit a hundred mil um, opening weekend. I don't know if I said yes to this, but if I had to do it all over again, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say yeah, no to no. I said, yeah. uh, it's, it's looking real tough for, for this movie to get 100 mil because of obviously what's going on in the world and um, the possibility of this movie not being that greatly reviewed as m the others have been or some of the good ones uh, for Marvel so this is looking pretty my excitement man has been like like if I was a stock <laughs> <laughs> you would have shorted the excitement level for this movie. This is this is this is not. This is, it doesn't look. It doesn't. I don't know, man. I'm not confident about this film in terms of it being what I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, with regards to the the martial arts and telling us a great story and Shang Chi being this this philosophical type dude. You know, um, we'll, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about Shang-Chi and its uh, potential at the box office. Um, next up, Captain Marvel star Brie Larson has stated that, you know, Miss Marvel or the Marvels has started filming. I'm going to say this. I'm looking forward to two things. One, Photon and her uh, participation in this film, what she's going to do and what sort of relationship she's going to have with Captain Marvel. And two, if Blue Marvel is going to show up. Those are my only, those are the only two things that I'm looking forward to and hoping to see in this film. What are your thoughts on, on Captain Marvel um, starting filming? So I have a suspicion that Miss Marvel being delayed may be related to this film because of the fact that Miss Marvel is in the Marvels. And I think that they may be wanting to make sure there's that connectivity between the show and the film. Yeah. Um, and so I'm wondering if they decided, hey, let's make the calendar a little bit tighter between Miss Marvel show that'll come out first and then this movie that will come out later. Uh, I think to me this is, this movie will stand on its own merit. It no longer has Endgame to cover for it. So I think that they really have to fix a couple of key things. And number one is number one is Brie Larson herself. She's an Academy Award winner. I don't think she found Carol Danvers in that first performance. Mm -hmm. New director, Nia DaCosta, in the seat, needs to extract something a little different. Not quite mm -hmm. sure what that is, but the 
character has to be a little more relatable uh, and a little more dynamic than I think we got in the first one. Second is the action. Captain Marvel action is bad. I'm sorry. Like, go back and watch. You have this bizarre night vision barbled scene where you can barely see what's going on in the early stages. The her assault on Ronan's ship kind of cheesy quite honestly like it's like where she's going through the missiles and I mean I don't want to pull out the Superman 3 in the canyon where he's kicking the missiles but it's like <laughs> it's 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 not great for 2019 effects mm -hmm. so that's my second one is they need better action set pieces for her and wow. her sidekicks or as we're seemingly going to get I think if you get those two things right even like if the story's still uneven I think the movie will will do a lot better. So like better Carol Danvers, better set pieces alone, I think will get you a long way. But I think there's real pressure on this. And I think Marvel knows that because they mm. got they know they got away with the first one. Yeah, they definitely got away with it. We'll see, man, because uh, the first one to me was a bit disappointing in terms of what I saw. It, it made obviously it made a lot of a lot of money and it was due to it being the movie before uh infinity war and you having to see you know having to see did it come out before infinity war or endgame endgame so you had to see it it's like you had to see it if you're a marvel fan you had to see this movie whether you it, whether it was bad reviews or not you were going to go see it we was going to make money so um, this one doesn't have the luxury of, 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 of having something to look forward to after that or a connection with that in order for it to hit a billion dollars. It's going to have to be different. I don't think it's going to probably hit a billion dollars, uh, but we'll see. But we'll see. Um, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think. Um, next up, so Hugh Jackman again they're saying that you, you know i haven't gotten a call from kevin now again if you saw loki and the ending of loki anything is possible i'm fine with hugh jackman showing up cameo i'm fine with that he doesn't need to be Wolverine or the next Wolverine for the next iteration of these X-Men. He doesn't need to be that, and I believe he knows that. But whether or not he is going to be in the MCU as in, in, as in a cameo appearance, that's different. He may be lying to you about that, and I doubt that he won't be in it. In a cameo appearance, he's not going to pass that up. Brian, your thoughts? Yeah, hundred percent. I think, I think he knows. I mean, he's at peace with going out with Logan as the as his actual ending to being Wolverine. And I think you and I are happy with that. I know some of the fans want to live in the past and pretend like you know, he, he hasn't aged, like his character doesn't age. But you know, he he, he was the part for twenty years. How many of yeah. us get to be one yeah. thing? successfully for 20 years and i think yeah. he knew that he went out with a good one and he was happy with that cameo great he is perfect i mean if you guys saw what was it first class where where they come into the bar and he tells them to f off yeah they can do stuff like that for another 20 years yeah and he's charismatic enough and funny enough to make that work i exactly. we talked about him as the next stan lee from a cam i'm i'm do it i'm totally fine with that totally yeah. fine with that but he doesn't want to be Wolverine as the mainline star any more than we want him to be Wolverine as a mainline star, which is we oh, want somebody new. Yeah, Brian, and, and the reason for that is because, you know, the next Wolverine will be a demanding role. He is a very popular character. We were going to want to see a lot of him. And at this age, and him wanting possibly to do other things, there isn't enough time for him to facilitate that request for fans. So 
cameo, I'm all for it. And I think we're going to get that, you know, right now he's just, you know, doing what he has to do in order to get people not to even think about it. And when he does, and when it does happen, everybody's going to be surprised, clapping in the theater. Everybody's gonna, you're going to get that reaction that you want to see out of theaters. And, and, and he's going to make that happen. My prediction when Wolverine does return, the next iteration is going to be closest to the 1990s cartoon. That's my prediction. Because I don't think that's the lane that Hugh Jackman chose to take this character. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Wolverine in that show is more tormented, more angry, more unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, when we did fight scenes, it is inexcusable that Wolverine is not in the top five of an MCU fight scene. So we are still waiting, I think, for the next generation for him to match up with someone where we're just like, wow, yeah. start to finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hugh Jackson, although he was great as Wolverine, we there is no inkling of him being the savage that he is um, in the comics and the guy looking for trouble, although, you know, he found plenty of trouble in the MC, you know, in the, in the Fox uh, properties, but still his fighting progress wasn't at full display in those movies. And I think that's, uh, that's a part of it that's missing uh, for that character. But let us know in the comments section below what you guys think about Hugh Jackman, um, reprising the role as Wolverine as a cameo, not as full time, because it's not happening. It's not happening. Get it out of your mind. You can say whatever you want. Oh, yeah, he's going to do it. I think it's not happening. 100 percent. It's not happening. Um, Next up. Box office for the Suicide Squad underwhelms with twenty six point five million dollars in its debut amid the Delta variant. Uh, Delta variant uh, concerns. Pandemic. And a bunch of other stuff. You can uh, throw at the reason for it not performing at the box office. But we were talking about this film for quite some time. In the beginning, we were sort of certainly excited at what we were seeing. But the more and more we got to see of it in terms of trailers, especially for me, I just felt that this movie was just going to be too goofy. And just not do as good as people thought it would do because for me, you know, these characters, I never heard of Bloodsport, but Idris Elba obviously is a, is, is a fantastic actor and you probably want to, he has his fans that might want to go see him. You have Margot Robbie, even though her Harley Quinn is fantastic, Birds of Prey was whack. So you still, she has a lot of fans. But as the more and more you know about this film, we knew that he was going to face this starfish type creature. Brian, it was just too goofy for me. I watched it. I fell asleep at some point. I don't know at what point I fell asleep, but I fell asleep and I woke up and I got a version of the Wicker Man. What's it called? The Wicker Man? What's it, that movie with the with the with the rodents uh, yeah. with, with McFly as the, the lead? I'm sorry, I, I, I there are some memorable characters, um, Shark Shark uh, Shark Man or whatever King Shark, yeah. yeah King Shark. He was he was he was okay. He was funny and stuff, but there's not enough there to build off of. You can use Viola Davis forever yeah. in that world. She's perfect. You know what's perfect, Brian? She is perfect for that role. I can watch her. 
But everyone else, I'm sorry, man. This movie isn't great. It's fun. It's entertaining. But it's just not. This was not unexpected that this movie would make this much money in the theaters. What were your thoughts? I think you and I had this movie 100% pegged from the beginning. Um, and I, I watched this movie as you did on HBO Max, which says something in and of itself that push came to shove. I wasn't so compelled that I had to go to the theater. And judging from the box office, neither were a lot of people. But I think the issues here, like if you said to me, when you look at that box office number, it, what's the biggest issue? I don't think COVID is the biggest issue. I think the biggest issue is, I don't know that there's a way to make these characters billion dollar characters. I just don't. Because I think he got the spirit. This is like... It, Everything I have come to know about these characters in the Suicide Squad comic, he gave you that yeah. on the screen. Mm -hmm. He gave it to you in a form that was no surprise to me, at least, and to you, I don't think, tailor-made for critics more than for fans. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is there's a lot of moments in this movie where you can see the skill on display. Mm -hmm. It is shot creatively there's camera cuts there's like when harley one of my favorite scenes the harley quinn escape where he kind of borrows from kingsman to swap out the blood for the flowers like you see the artistry right so as a yeah. critic you sit there and you're like i'm in the hands of a high level filmmaker yeah. and i think he borrowed you know by giving him the r rating we saw something we really didn't see in the guardians movies which was he really unleashed his inner tarantino a lot of these deaths are yeah. over the top. They're jarring, but it but but set to pop music a lot of the times the way that Tarantino would love to do his bloody yeah, scenes. Yeah. And that's just like it for critics. I just don't think that that kind of stuff always resonates with fans. It, it doesn't make the difference between entertaining and not entertaining. Yeah. And I just think you got through this movie and you got to the end of it, and you're like, I was entertained, moderately so. But I didn't walk out of the theater saying, I need to see two more of these films yesterday. <laughs> I, I don't. And, and I think the box office, and I think more importantly, the cinema score, B plus from the audiences versus 92% from the critics, you know what also got B plus from the audience? David Ayer's Suicide Squad. You know that movie that was 26% on a Rotten Tomatoes, but made 800 million a box office that David Ayer hates to this day? Same audience feedback to that movie as to this one. And so to me, that says, I don't know that there's a path to a truly brilliant Suicide Squad that is multiple films and billion dollars a pop. Yeah. I enjoyed most. I I I enjoyed the Suicide Squad animated film that they did, Arkham Escape from Arkham or something like that. I forget what it's called. I enjoyed that more than I did this. Listen, for all of you who saying that this movie was great, fine. If you want to, if you, if you enjoyed very it, very well made. Yes. Right. If you crafted. enjoyed it, it is definitely fine. better crafted than the yes. first one. Yes. There's no comparison. There will be no more of this. Why? There's obviously no money to be made there. You, it, this can't. The, 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 this won't go mainstream. I don't know if you saw Upgrade. Love it. One of my favorite action movies of the last five or six years. But it's one of those. How much money did it make? Yeah, it's, it's small. It's an indie. It's basically an indie yeah. film. Yeah. There's just not an audience for that. Um, and for those of you wishing out there, and I've seen a lot of YouTubers, oh, we need to see this. No, we don't. No, we don't. There's other stories to be told 
and Suicide Squad, they're not going to continue doing this. Perhaps in a series, you never know. You can do whatever in a series. But it's, you know. So let's talk about a couple other angles here. I do think this movie was hurt mm -hmm. by the first movie. We're only five years removed. Yeah. If Marvel had done Guardians of the Galaxy in 2006, pre-Iron Man 1, and it had been kind of ridiculed, poorly reviewed, and then they tried to do the exact Guardians movie they released five years later, I don't think it would have done as well either. Mm -hmm. I think something like this, this is not Superman. This is not Batman. There is not Spider-Man. There are characters that I think you can continually recycle and the yeah. audience will keep coming out as long as it's good. Or yeah. if the newer version is better than the last, yeah. they will forgive and forget. Yeah. But for these second tier, this next tier of character, I don't know that you get a do-over that quickly. Yeah. And so I do think the first movie hurt this one because people... There were 800 million worth of people who saw the first movie who were kind of like, do I really need, even if this is good, <laughs> do I need this? Yeah, yeah. Is this going to hook me? It, I think they did as good a job as they, I, I, I don't know that they could have made a much better film. It just, I just don't think the buzz and the jam was there for this. Yeah. I do think like had this come out in 2016, I do think it would have at least matched the 800 million that the 2016 version did. It's a better yeah. movie. Yeah. But, and you hit on TV. So, am I the only one who is now kind of like, I walked out of this movie, we know scene is coming in, in the TV series. Is Idris Elba in the TV series? Because if he's not, we're really missing out. The two of them actually were one of my favorite parts of this movie. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I don't know if he is in the, the John Cena series. He's, I don't believe he is. He, and and I don't believe that's he That's a is, shame because yeah. the two of them were awesome. Like when they were one-upping each other in the camp. Yeah. That's one of my three favorite moments in this movie. Yeah. I mean, again, there's a lot of good moments in this, but it's just not enough to want me to, to want to see over and over again in different situations. It's like, I, it's just, I don't, I don't see a path towards continuing on this, down this road of this hyper violence and goofiness that was in this film. Um, again, if you, uh, one quick thing before we move on to compare it to Guardians of the Galaxy, you don't have that hyper violence, but yet you're off world. You're not, you know, you're in a totally make believe situation, sort of, right? You're like, you know, in space and, you know, and obviously the music had a lot to do with it. And the characters and the way that they, they you know, they got good people to, to portray these characters and the connection to other storylines um, always gets people to come out to see how is it connected and what do we have to look forward to after this? Um, with Suicide Squad, you don't have a lot of that. So, and then again, you're not going to get kids to come. You got, I'm pretty sure a lot of kids saw Guardians of the Galaxy. You're not going to take your kids to see Suicide Squad. No. Like, are you that, kidding that is me? That made clear to you within 30 seconds when the yeah. bird eats it in the corner yeah the so it's, it's, it's yeah. like how, how do you make this a franchise you you you, you can't you can't yeah. well let us know in the conversation below what you guys think about suicide squad um and, and did you enjoy it i i enjoyed it but i just don't see a feature in it it's a tv series the next time they do it yeah yeah um next up this is gonna be a I, I, every time I talk about this subject, it's just, I can talk about it forever. Jeffrey Wright calls the Batman brilliant and praises Robert Pattinson. 
Brian, you already know how I feel about the Batman. It's no surprise to me uh, what he's saying about um, Pattinson in his uh, performance in this in this this movie. He stated it was difficult to make this movie because of the pandemic and being alone, isolated in a hotel, nobody around, or whatever the case may be. It was difficult to 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 get done, but he did it, um, especially after reading the script. I don't want to hype this movie as much as I've hyped it up already. I've hyped it up quite a bit. But again, I'm going to reiterate this Batman. I don't care what nobody says. This Batman will be the best Batman we've seen in, on film ever. And to me, Michael Keaton's Batman is the best. To me, Michael Keaton's Batman is the best second Kristen Bell, but number one after this movie comes out is going to be Brock Pattinson's uh, version of it and Matt Reeves' version of this uh, Batman. And a lot of the elements that we've been talking about not being in these other iterations is going to show up in this film. And I have no doubts that it's going, hopefully we've sort of return sort of to semi-normal and and we can go to the theaters without having to worry too much and if that is the case i still think um this movie will do uh, very very well at the box office brian is is there any doubt to this film being as good as we think it will be well, I mean, there's a, there's always doubt of, you know, to add to your comments. Yeah, Michael Keaton, my favorite Batman. Dark Knight, my favorite Batman movie um, to date. And neither one of those is that close in my book. There's always doubt. But I think, yeah, I don't know if Jeffrey Wright felt compelled to weigh in, given the some of the rumor mongering on the negative side that's continually come out about this film. But, you know, he touched on something you and I had discussed, which was this stop and go long extended production. And I, I speculated that for Pattinson in particular, if he was going method on Bruce Wayne as sort of this scarred, troubled, younger Bruce Wayne trying to figure out the detective and trying to figure out the alter ego and had to sort of embody that for a year, basically. Yeah, he probably wouldn't have been that much fun to be around. <laughs> some yeah, of the days yeah, and i think yeah. jeffrey wright kind of speaks to that when he sort of says how hard this movie was to make but you know i think the, i think the fact that he singled him out means that in the scenes they shared which i would assume jeffrey wright shared more scenes with robert pattinson than any other character in this movie though maybe andy circus would be the only other one but yes, yes um he would be up there i think i think the praise carries weight because i mean actors know actors right so when they're opposite and they see the performance being built in front of them mm -hmm. you know they can they can recognize quality so I, I do i do put some stock in the comments i think it's harder to put actually stock comments in the overall movie only because he hasn't seen it right so we, yeah. we haven't seen the edited version so he's going off of the the shoot he's going off of the little bit that he has seen but you know a lot of times i think actors leave films thinking they've made something great and then the cutting yeah. room floor and the yeah. post post production it doesn't quite get there so i actually kind of downgrade that piece a little more than i do the the patents and piece I think because of how much control Matt Reeves has been given to do this film, he is going to have a lot to say regarding how this is cut and what he presents. When we see the Batman is going to be Matt Reeves' movie and not something that Warner Brothers needed to bring somebody in to cut themselves because they didn't like what Matt Reeves has done. I think when we see the movie, it's going to be Matt Reeves' movie. And I think we're going to see brilliance. In my opinion, I think we're going to, I have, I'm quite confident that this movie is going to be fantastic and one of the best Batmans we've ever seen on film once again. I'll He's already it. picked yeah. a period of Bruce Wayne's life that is new. Yes. He's picked a focus, which we haven't seen on screen before, the detective side. And he's picked a genre seemingly with sort of the horror, the serial killer, the murder aspect of this that we haven't seen Batman inhabit. So he's already got three things going for him that other films didn't try. So if nothing else, yes, 
we're in new territory with the yes. character. And that alone with Batman is going to count for something. Yes. I can't wait for this film, Brian. I'm telling you, the moment I see this movie, I'm going to have, I'm, you're going to have to be on the same page as me. You got to see it that weekend so we can talk about it immediately. Well, hopefully we can see it together by then. Yeah. That might be yeah. That, that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Um, let us know what you guys think. Are you excited for the Batman? I, and I'm pretty sure many of you are based on just the um, the trailer and there are hopes for us to see a, a, a different trailer or, or some new scenes and, uh, for DC fandom coming up soon um, that where there's rumored that we're going to be seeing another trailer. Um, some Black Adam updates. Um, apparently, they're going to be using some new techniques for the flying sequences, which I'm very interested in seeing, Brian, for this reason alone, is that what we've seen in flying so far after Superman and other movies where flying is, flying is involved, Hancock, the, the reason why I like Iron Man, because, you know, he's using a, it's, it's a different sort of situation. It's not a, a dude just flying. He's flying in a robot. I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in some sort of machinery where there has been an individual in just a, in, in just a costume flying. There hasn't, been, there hasn't been anything different that will make us say, wow. Perhaps it's one of the reasons why I didn't like Sajam that much and I thought it was just okay. This new flying technique or visual that are there that they're working with may entice me even more to want to go see this film just to see how that looks or what that looks like because again we haven't seen anything jaw dropping from Shazam Man of Steel uh so what they're trying to do, I'm interested in seeing what they're going to do with this. What were your thoughts when you when you when you heard of this? Um, uh, What's it called? Um, trial. Uh, damn, what's it that? I hate when I lose my freaking print of thought. Um, <laughs> this experimentation with the flying. It's the single best piece of Black Adam news I've seen to date. I almost don't even care if it's good because I hope it is, yeah. but I almost don't care because this is exactly what I've said to you is the responsibility of filmmakers and studios. Don't complain to us about some entitlement you have that we have to go to the theater to see movies just because we did that 10 and 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Give us new reasons to go. The whole point of cinema was this creative escape, a yeah. palette to paint with, to develop and innovate. Yeah. And so to me, my hat is already off. This is the first time I'm genuinely excited for something about this movie because I can yes. say, you know what? Yes. You guys identified an issue in the comic book genre, which is superhuman effects have not been perfected on screen. And you're going to try something to see if you can get one step yes. closer with a character who can kind of do everything. So yes. strength, speed, you know, it's all agility. Like the, supposedly a lot of this is meant, I think, to capture velocity and force somehow that we're supposed to, I, I'm kind of trying to vision this almost felt like a description of like a new version of bullet time from the mm -hmm, matrix. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. what I kind of got this sense of. Yeah. But as I said, it's an innovation. Even if it crashes and burns, even if every critic is like, this is terrible, I don't care. I applaud the decision to swing at it yeah. and give the rock and give a character a different angle that might, if it hits, yeah. might be worth seeing on a big screen. Yes. Uh, I don't know if I'm quoting um, Mr. Candy. I think it was his name in, in, in Django Unchained, Mr. Candy or Candy? Alvin Candy. Candy. Yeah. Can, yes. You have my curiosity. Now you got my attention. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, I'm, I'm quite, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what this is going to look like. Um, 
Speaking of Black Adam. The inevitable. Dwayne, yes. And I'm pretty sure Dwayne has been trying to get at Kevin for a minute. I'm pretty sure he's cool with him. Um, so some article came out with uh, saying that Dwayne and, and Kevin Feige have talked about characters or potential ideas um, that Dwayne and Brock Johnson could involve himself with. I only have two, and I've mentioned those two in past shows before, a long, long time ago. Number one was Gladiator. If they ever did the Shi'ar em uh, Empire and uh, the Phoenix Saga again and did it right, he would be a perfect Gladiator. The second character I think would be perfect, even better, is the thing. You don't see him. You can see him in the beginning being the, 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 the muscle. The, you can see him being that. But then not seeing the rock and seeing the thing. I think those are better suited for him in the MCU. What are your thoughts? I'll throw one other legitimate possibility and then one more humorous one. I think other legitimate possibility you have to acknowledge is they're talking about using his voice and not him. Okay. Especially as we're getting more animated. Think about Vin Diesel with Groot. Mm -hmm. You know, you can even say on the DC side, Sylvester Stallone did a really funny, nice job with King yeah. Shark. I can't believe yeah. he agreed to do that, but it worked. Yeah. So I think don't underestimate, maybe they're asking Dwayne Johnson for his voice as opposed to all of him. I think the second piece is, as we've talked about many times, a lot of this is really in the rock's corner as far as like, what is he willing to give up? What is he willing to be a part of versus control? Mm -hmm. This is not an entity that he can just come in and front to back have full creative over so is he okay yeah. with that if he's okay with that then he can be a major asset probably somewhere whether it's a character you described or in some other capacity um there's other kind of physically imposing villains that have yet to be explored where he maybe if you put him in some makeup and i mean look i mean we saw we talk about the colin farrell transformation you can make anyone unrecognizable with the right effects yeah. Yeah. and there are powerful physical characters that have not been explored yet so there's room for him but i think he has to make room for them too uh, for yeah. this to really really work and so but look he's such a big star and kevin feige's clout is so large I mean, of course they've talked. Like, of course, how yes. would they not? I mean, yeah. and then the the humorous the humorous side of me is that conversation was really Kevin Feige saying, "Hey, hey, Dwayne, mm -hmm. tell Emily Blunt, Fantastic Four, make it happen for us." That's really what the conversation yeah, was. Yeah, he's <laughs> definitely fishing. Like, hey, try to get her on, man. Try to get her on, because <laughs> it just makes sense, man. But if Dwayne, The Rock Johnson decides. And if Kevin decides that Dwayne can play specific roles, hopefully he's a team player and doesn't take over the situation and end up like Edgar Wright or Terrence Howard. Although I don't think he'll end up in those situations because he is the rock. Um, and um, he'll play ball because he's cool with Kevin. And Kevin he is also the man. has a long history with Disney. The Rock yes. has a long history with this. Yes. Yes. That's the other yes. thing. Yeah. So let us know in the comment section below what character would you like to see Dwayne The Rock Johnson play? Um, and our last topic, <laughs> Yahya Abdul Mateen says Aquaman 2 script is better than the first. I don't Doubt it. That is about all I can say for Aquaman 2. Because I really don't see where we go from here. Um, there have been some ideas thrown out as to what this movie may be about. For me, obviously, he has to lose the arm. He has to lose the arm. Uh, but... I don't know where we go from here because I don't think we can get any worse than what we did last time. Um, it could, 
if with Warner Brothers, anything is possible. But if they are people, if there are people who are listening to what were some of the gripes they had with the original of or the first one, um, they are going to make some adjustments and we're going to possibly get a, a, a better movie. I don't think we'll get a billion dollars, though. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I don't think the strength of this movie was the was necessarily the eloquence of the uh, of the script the first time around. It was it checked its boxes, but obviously, what what hooked people was the visuals, and I think the, almost the campiness and the fun and kind of the you know the underworld over the top, almost '80s style that that James Wan found. It really just struck a chord with people. I, I don't profess to, I mean, I, I like it better than you did, but I don't profess to have felt like, hey, this was $1.1 to $1.2 billion waiting to happen when I saw it on screen. And yeah. it became a phenomenon, especially overseas, especially overseas. Mm -hmm. Read this article, and Pablo links it. Read this article closely because he says the script is better than the first film for him, <laughs> which I would say is the least surprising development here because he is a much bigger star now than he was when he signed to do the first film. Yes. You and I actually talked about this. We said when this came out, the one thing we're pretty sure of is he's going to have a bigger part and a better yeah. part. And he's yeah. like, oh, I get to have different sides <laughs> and different colors. Yeah, let me tell you what that is. That's the writers after his profile did what it did the last five years, being like, yo, we got to do a punch up. Give him more lines. <laughs> give him more screen time because we need to we need to sell him. That's what that is. Read the article. He really yeah. doesn't say much about the broader story. Yeah, Everything yeah. he talks about is, is about his, his story. <laughs> <laughs> hey he was severely underutilizing that film no doubt and he was just used incorrectly um but the movie did what it did let's see what it does this time i doubt it'll make a billion is it gonna be a better script you know listen jason momoa is 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 uh taking on the responsibility of writing some of it we don't know how much of it will show up on screen. Um, and Jason Moore is going to have a lot of say as to what this film is going to be about. So let's see. Let's see. Have you seen the photos of Abdul Mateen's workouts, by the way? Yeah, he's, 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 he's he, he, he He definitely, he's coming in, coming in hot to this movie, so. Yeah. I hope he doesn't have the same sort of, like, you know, role in terms of his character being sort of in the background but not really that important i don't think so i think i think he's actually gonna be i think he's more the main villain than not and i think like i said part of that has to do with his celebrity and his profile yeah. as an actor almost made it a necessity I, i'll be shocked if yeah. he is not a big like a 1a type of yeah. character yeah yeah because he, he he definitely deserves more than what he was given in in that first one. But um, let's see, let's see. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. That it is going to be our show for today. Um, again, there's lots to talk about, lots to go over in the future. We're gonna do a spotlight on the Spider-Man No Way Home film. So just one, I want to reiterate that you know these spotlights uh shows are not necessarily us going over the history of a character or anything like that we're just going to talk about um what's going on in the mcu with a specific character or or dc and just focusing on that and we have a lot to say about no no way home and what we expect and what we're concerned about this film we're also going to do a show regarding um, so what we liked and disliked about the Suicide Squad. I think, although we covered a lot of it today, <laughs> um, so we'll 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 discuss that and see if we even get that done. But yeah, man, a lot is happening in this space on business dealings. I believe tomorrow Disney is reporting. Correct? I think you're right. Um, do you get to listen to that? Anyone can listen to it. Just, oh, go okay. to, just Google Disney Investor Relations and there'll be a link to their webcast. Okay. Because yep. it's happening after the market closes, correct? Yeah, because they're Cal they're California based. Yeah. So West okay. Coast. Yeah. So yeah, there's gonna be interesting to see what comes. There's definitely gonna be a lot of news coming out. 
uh, on, on that. Um, hopefully some, we, these aren't the type of investor um, um, calls that we're gonna, that we're gonna get some new announcements of new shows, but more so of what they've done. Go ahead. Well, you could get no information if they were gonna make a change to any release dates or any release formats, this would be the public forum where they would tell you. So keep your ears glued to that. Although when this comes out, well, actually, you know, I'm gonna try to get this out before that happens. I'm gonna try to get this out before that happens. But um, any last words, Brian? No, <laughs> that, was a, that was an enormous amount to cover. So. Very, very exciting, very, very interesting. And unfortunately, things not looking up for the theatrical industry right this moment. So hopefully we can get things turned around for, for that in the, in the near future. I'm hoping that we just don't get any more delays, but um, it's looking inevitable that we might get some delays. I hope we don't get a delay for Eternals. That is a movie that I've been waiting to see for quite some time. Uh, but if they do, it is what it is. I, and, and we have to do nothing but understand the reasoning behind that. Um, it is what it is. But that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. Have a, a, a good evening, good day, and good morning. Later. <laughs>